I'm going to show you how to import a mark formatted file in this training video. To get to the import feature, you'll click the down arrow on the catalog button and then go to cataloging tools. And then it takes you right to import. Then what you have to do is click the blue folder, navigate to where the file is, select it, and then choose open. And then you will see the file there and then you have to click upload and then it goes into this area here. The next thing you want to do is where it says select table you're going to click the down arrow and choose bibliographic records and then click on import. The first screen you come to which is step one of three is the screen that lists the items in the file. This file has 26 items. Don't worry about these columns over here just worry about that the title show correctly and it looks like this and that means it's a good file. Then when we click next we're going to be at step two of three. This is where you could see what's in the fields. For example the 245 field if I click that is the title field and you can see the title of this book. And I can arrow through and look at the different titles. One thing that's important is always make sure there's an 852 box because this 852 box is required for a holding to be created during the import process. If you do not have an 852 box then after the import is done you will not have any holdings attached to the bibliographic records and you will have to go back and add the holdings manually. If I click on the 852 box you will see one thing that's important is this H field. This is the classification part and this particular item has the letter B in it. The B tells you where the item is located in the library. Another important field is the P field which is the barcode field and this is the barcode for this particular item. A holding must have a barcode because without the barcode you cannot loan the item. So that's very important. Now we're going to click next and get to step three of three. Here it's important to see that you have prompt if duplicates are found. Now what determines if it's a duplicate is the number in the 020A field which is the ISBN number. If you are importing a record that contains a number in the ISBN field that matches the number of a record that's already in the database it will be detected as a duplicate record. If you don't want to have the records uh, counted as duplicates you can click the allow duplicates and then the duplicate records would just be imported and won't be seen as a duplicate record. The next thing you want to do is choose the item group you want the item to belong to. So I'll choose this particular group and this determines the parameters that are assigned to the item that you're putting into the group. And then the last step is you click finish and as you can see it's counting in the back here and then it brings you up the summary of what uh, was imported. Now one thing that's important to notice here is this right here. Keyword equals 005 asterisk and then it's got all these numbers. This is the date that the record was imported. So if you want to find the records after they're imported you can just highlight this date. You got the year, the month, the day and then the time, your hours, minutes, uh, your seconds, and then you got your milliseconds. So I'm going to copy that, click OK, and then I'm going to go back to catalog, and then I'm going to change this to anywhere, paste in that date, click search, and then it should bring up all the items that I have just imported. And there they are, 26 results. And that completes uh, this training video on how to import a MARC record.